The time of the pulps, um, you know, which which was cyclical. Uh, you had, you know, you definitely had your 30s um, into the 40s, which was, you know, a huge golden age of that time. Um, and then you had later up into the, you know, the late 50s and then up through the 60s, um, which was, you know, huge too for, you know, a lot of writers just cranking out novels. And we're not talking doorstops, you know. We're, we're talking your, I mean, at that time, you know, you're like ace paperbacks and things where, you know, they were 60,000 words, 50, 60, right in there. Because they, they needed to be, you know, that big so they could cram a bunch onto those spinner racks. Um, you know, marketing <laughs> and merchandising was, that's what those were. And lots of writers churned out hundreds of novels um, in different names, in, you know, different genres, whatever. Because you quickly realize when you're a writer and a professional writer... Uh, and the vast majority of writers aren't going to be lucky to have a giant bestseller instantly um, or some literary hit that all of a sudden ends up on high school reading lists and things like that. Um, those are the outliers. Those, those are the 0.001% of the output and everything that's out there. So if you want to stay a working writer, you're going to have to crank out a lot of work. Um, you have to become your own mental factory. And um, nowadays, we're back to it because of ebooks. Um, the reason pulp was called pulp is because literally the pages were made from cheap wood pulp. I mean, that's, it was the cheapest paper they could put together that still would hold up as a physical book and take a beating from shipping and being on the spinner racks and all of that, stay together and be sold as a product. And now we're in the time of ebooks, and um, the pulp writer's back, big time, because it costs nothing <laughs> to print an ebook because you don't print it. <laughs> so that cost is completely gone. All you're dealing with is your production of, you know, cover, proofreading, editing, um, and then if you're a publisher, you know, paying the author too, and those things. But the costs are back to the days they were of all that great pulp fiction. Um, and you have generations who've grown up on it. Um, whether it's it's devouring, you know, bad movies, uh, cable TV, you know, before the golden age of television really has, you know, hit us. Uh, we grew up on schlock stuff. We grew up on, on not only the old pulps that you could get your hands on, the actual books from the 20s, 30s, 40s, and then your 60s sci-fi stuff and, and all the way up. But... Um, you had, you know, television, you had people who were influenced by the pulps making TV shows. So you had the influence on top of the influence on top of the influence. So there's tons of us that love this stuff and love one and want to write it. And um, I just happen to be one of those people that's prolific. If I have an idea, I will just start writing it. And as long as somebody pays me <laughs> to finish that idea, I'll keep going until I'm done and hand it off and move to the next one. Um, I write a 75,000 word novel in about a month. You know, four weeks is really what I do. And that's, that's what, you know, that's what keeps the lights on. Uh, when I quickly realized, okay, I am going to be more in the small press world uh, because that's what I had a foothold in. But the small press world nowadays with ebooks pays uh, and pays, you know, well if you can get a couple hits. And I've been lucky to get a couple hits. Um, but I still crank out a book every, you know, month or so. So, because that's what keeps the lights on. That's what I got to do. Mm -hmm.